Let's now move all of what we've done over to the Vuex store so we can uh, keep the token inside of our store. Uh, and that means that any subsequent requests that we make to any other pages, we can just keep that information available. So let's just check out how this works in terms of the navigation first of all. If you're new to Vuex, you might wanna check out the course we have, uh, the introduction to Vuex, uh, but this should be okay if you have not used it before. So uh, let's just close off our API folder and we have our store just inside of here. We have three things, our state, our mutations, our actions, and any modules that we want to attach. So the state is the state of your applications. This can store anything, it can store objects, it can store just plain strings, whatever you want. Mutations will update the state and actions will uh, maybe make requests to APIs, but it will commit to mutations. Um, so again, I'm not gonna fully talk about this, but our course on introduction to Vuex will clear all this up. So what we want is a module. So we want a specific auth module which will deal with authentication and all that kind of stuff. And I can actually copy and paste this scaffolding across uh, just to make this a little bit easier. The only thing we don't need to do is export a new store because what we're going to export from this is just an object which we can attach to our main store. So I'm just going to swap that over and I'm going to get rid of the uh, declaration in there to pull that in. So we don't need modules inside of here, like so, but we do need to have our state mutations and actions uh, for our authentication. What we can now do is over here, go ahead and import auth from, and that's just in the same folder, and we can set that as a module inside of there. So let's just talk about our state first of all, and the two things that we need to keep when we authenticate our user. We want to store the token, we want to keep the token in our store, and we want to keep the user information in our store. So eventually what this will look like when we authenticate with an action and commit a mutation to set the token in user is we'll end up with a token inside of here and we'll end up with an object in here with that information back from that me endpoint. So we'll have the email and the username or name or whatever information that you're storing. So that's the goal to uh, get working in this part. Now I'm gonna set these to null for now. One thing that you're gonna to want to do is install the view dev tools. This will allow you to look at the current state of your Vuex store. So if I click load state here, you can see that we've got our auth module, which contains our token and our user. So what we now want to do is an, uh, create an action much like we had over in this sign in page and do pretty much what we're doing in here, but then set the token and the user's information. So over in sign in, let's go and take what we created in here and let's get rid of this async thing in here. Get rid of this, come over to auth.js and let's create an action to sign the user in. And that's gonna be an async sign in action like so. And I'm gonna pop that inside of there and I'm gonna console log the response we get back. Now we're using Axios inside of this file now, so we need to go ahead and import Axios in here. And we don't have this form available, so what we can actually do is pass down the credentials into uh, the sign-in method. So let's pass that in as the second option because the first option is a destructured object where we get back the ability to dispatch or commit mutations, dispatch other actions or commit mutations. Um, and we're not using any of them just yet. So let's just add in a underscore in here just for now. So let's head over and make sure we don't have any linting errors. And we do because over in sign in, we are importing Axios, but we're not using it. Great, perfect. So now what we want to do is instead of submitting all of that in there, we now want to call or invoke this sign in action passing in the credentials and we should see that data come back exactly as we had before. So to use an action inside of another component, we have the ability to go ahead and map in actions from our Vuex store. So let's go ahead and say actions from Vuex. And now what we can do is spread them into our component methods and the method is sign in and that comes from the auth module 
under sign in. Now we'll actually see an error if we try and call this sign in passing in this form because we haven't set this up as a namespace module. So let's go ahead and just submit this and you can see we get an unknown action type auth sign in despite the fact that we have this module inside of our main store. And the reason for this is this is not namespaced. So as soon as we add the namespaced property and set that to true, that will allow us to send that request across. And of course we get a 401 unauthorized because we're not sending any information across. Let's do this again with the correct password, monitor our network tab and sure enough in the console, at the moment we get undefined, but we'll sort that out in just a second, but we do get the correct uh, response back, which is great. Now, the reason that we are getting, if we just head back over to the browser, uh, undefined here is that we're not waiting for this request to finish. So I didn't include that before and the console log wouldn't have given us anything, but we want to use the await keyword in conjunction with the async keyword to make sure that we wait before we continue here. So what we can do now is sign in with our cred correct credentials and that response object will now give us back that token, perfect. So this may seem very complicated, but what we now want to do is create another method which will be a kind of general uh, action to attempt authentication and then commit the token and the user. So let's get rid of this just for now. Let's create another method in here called attempt. And that will allow us to commit a mutation and we'll also accept in a token. So essentially the steps are we hit sign in, we then try and attempt the authentication, e.g. access the me endpoint, which will uh, validate whether the token is uh, correct, but that will also give us back the user's information. So let's code this out. I'll explain as we go, but then we'll come back to it and we'll explain what we're doing. So at the moment we are, aren't committing anything and our linter is gonna shout at us. So I'm just gonna add an underscore in there for now. And inside of here, what we're gonna do is we are going to use the dispatch function to dispatch the attempt action and we're gonna pass in response data token. So we're signing the user in or at least attempting authentication and then once that comes back successfully, we're passing the token over to this attempt method. So we can just log out token here and that should just work in exactly the same way. So again, let's just go ahead and fill in this information hit sign in and we get that token back. So what we can now do inside of here is commit a mutation to store that token. So let's bring in the ability to commit a mutation. We don't have a mutation just now, but we can fill this in. And this is going to be set token. And we're gonna pass in the token that we get inside of here. Very, very simple at the moment, but this will get a little bit more uh, complex and a bit more useful later. So let's add this set token mutation i'm just using a all caps with underscore in here just to denote that this is a mutation you don't need to do this it's just a standard so you can just use normal method names if you want to now when we uh, commit a mutation we get the current state into this and we get any data we're trying to commit so all i need to do now is say state.token equals token very very simple and now what this will do is it will dispatch the attempt method or action, it will then commit putting that token into our state. And we can do a very similar thing as well with the user information, but we don't have that just uh, available at the moment. So if we keep an eye on our view, uh, view X store here, we can go ahead and sign in. And you can see that that has been committed and we now have, if we load our state, that token inside of our state, and we can reuse that to uh, authenticate the user on subsequent requests. Now, the purpose of this attempt action isn't just to commit the token. That would be silly because we could have just done that over here. What we actually want to do is once we have the token, so if a token's been passed in, we now want to make another request to the me endpoint to check that the, the user's token actually works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a try catch block in here because we wanna kind of tidy things up with the uh, store if we don't successfully send a request here. And we're gonna say let response, much like we did before, we're gonna use Axios to get 
auth slash me, like so. Now, once we have done that and we get that information back from the response, we're going to go ahead and commit another mutation, which is going to be to set the user's data. And that will be just all of the data we get back from the me endpoint. So let's create another mutation in here called set user. That will just contain the user's data. So we can say state.user equals data, like so. Okay, so let's log out failed here. And this will fail, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. But let's just see what happens. So let's sign ourselves in, like so. And you can see we get a 401 unauthorized to the API auth me endpoint. And of course, we don't get any information inside of user. This is shown as undefined just at the moment. Now, the reason that this doesn't work is uh, for our Axios request, we're not actually sending any header information across. We can do that inside of our options for this request. So let's go ahead and set up some headers in here. And inside of here, we're going to say authorization. And we're going to say bearer I can spell it correctly and we're going to concatenate on the token so that should now send that header across and we should get back that user's information we're not going to do this going forward but this will just allow us to actually uh, send that token across and get that information back so let's send a request across again and I've submitted that and we should now see if we load our state let's do, try that again and it looks like we still get undefined so let's go back and just check this out. Okay, of course we've forgotten the await keyword in there. You probably spotted that. Uh, so let's go and try this once more. Sign in and load the state and we still get undefined. So let's see what's happening here. That would just be response.data. So <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Let's try this again. And I will go over this in case it's not 100% clear. Right, so now what we've got is the email address and the name in there. Let me just go over this once again because we did have a little few hiccups here um, and we'll just follow this through from the sign-in action. So we're committed, oh, we're dispatching the sign-in action from sign-in passing through this form. What that's doing is it's signing us in and giving us the token but it's not checking if that token is valid. Attempt will do that by setting the token it will go ahead and send a request across to AuthMe with that authorization token in. Cast your mind back to when we looked at Postman, we have to send the token along with the request to AuthMe to be able to actually get that information back. What we're then doing is committing the data we get back from the Me endpoint and storing that over in our state. And if that fails for any reason, we're just catching that error and we can just do a little bit of clearing up. So we can add that in now. So if this does fail for any reason, remember later on when a user returns back to your application, their token may have expired. And if their token has expired, we want to clear everything out. So if that does fail, we're going to set the token to null and we're also going to set the user to null as well. So we're going to commit them two things to kind of tidy things up. And we can kind of test this out, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Okay, so what we've done here is we've moved the ability to... Uh, authenticate over to our Vuex store and we've looked at mutations and committing as well so let's sign in once again and seal that information in here what we want to focus on next is grabbing the information from our store and showing uh, the relevant options in the navigation and also showing my full name in there as well if I am signed in. We are going to make some changes to what we did here passing through the header uh, because we're going to need to add these to Axios as default headers for the rest of our application lifecycle. But let's move on to the next part and look at our navigation so at least we can visually see in our UI that we are authenticated and then we'll start to tidy things up as well. So let's go over and do that next uh, before we move on.